So we have all seen this message before, right? Whenever you go to place a trade, you have your entry stops, targets, the amount of units you want to purchase of that specific currency all in. You click the button, buy or sell, and something pops up on your screen that says insufficient margin. This is a confusing message for a majority of traders because let's say you have a thousand dollar account, you're trying to risk 100 bucks and you're like, I should be able to risk a hundred dollars on a thousand dollar account, right? Not necessarily depending on a couple of different factors. So if you've ever seen that message before and been confused or even just curious about what it means, why it happens and how you can avoid it, then today's video is for you because that's what we're going over in this video. And by the end of it, you will no longer be confused about why that happens. And you'll also have a good idea of how to avoid that happening in the future. So if that sounds good, these are the two things for me. Go ahead and click that like button. Go ahead and subscribe. If you are new, if you are already a subscriber, welcome back. Let's go ahead and get started. So for this first scenario, let's say you have a one hundred dollar trading account just to make math easy let's say you have a 100 to 1 leverage on that account and what this is going to do is give you 10,000 units of buying power it's re the way we come up with that number is just 100 times 100 is 10,000 so therefore we have 10,000 units I'm gonna put BP this just stands for buying power so we have 10,000 units of buying power. And this is the first mistake I see so many beginners making. They'll have this situation, $100 account, 100 to one leverage. They'll be on the Euro dollar five minute chart like we are right now. They'll be trying to place a trade that has a five pip stop loss. Doesn't matter what the target is. And they want to risk $10. They're thinking to themselves, and maybe you're thinking right now, $10 risk on a $100 account. I should be able to do that if I want to. I don't understand why this would be a trade I can't place, right? If that's what you're thinking right now, let me explain a little bit further about the way margin works. You have 10,000 units of buying power right now with this account size and leverage. And you're trying to place a trade with a five pip stop loss and a $10 risk. Margin has less to do with what you're trying to risk in terms of I want to risk $10 on a $100 account and more to do with the amount of units you can control at any one given time on your entire account, which in this case would be 10,000 units. And if we're trying to have a $10 stop with a five pip stop, what does that mean we are attempting to do? Well, we know, hopefully you know, and if not, here's a little lesson for you. A mini lot or 10,000 units of currency is normally equal to $1 per pip is what that is normally worth. So with this being the case, if we are trying to have a five pip stop loss equal $10 of risk, how many units of this currency will we have to buy for this situation to play out? We will need, all we have to do is multiply this by two, right? We need this to be $2 per pip because in order to have a $10 risk on five pips of stop loss, we need $2 per pip to equal that $10 risk, right? So if 10,000 units is $1 per pip, then 20,000 units is what we need to purchase in order to make this trade happen. And the reason we get the message that says insufficient margin is because you cannot hold 20,000 units of any currency or any pair while you only have 10,000 units of buying power. Does that make sense? So this is the first reason your broker will say no to you. Every time you try to make this trade, the reason they say no is because you are attempting to use 20,000 units on an account where you can only have 10,000 units of buying power. And what is the cause of all this? Your stop loss being too small. The reason you're, you're having this situation is because you have too small of a stop loss and you're trying to risk too much money with that small stop loss. So let's talk about way number two. That's the first way that you're going to get that message of insufficient funds, insufficient margin, whatever your brokerage calls it, is because you're trying to hold whether your risk, remember our risk right now, we're still, we're trying to risk only $10. So in most beginners heads, it makes sense that I should be able to risk $10 on a hundred dollar account, but the other two steps, are to find out how many units I have to hold in order for this $10 risk to exist. And in this case, that would be 20,000 units, which your brokerage will not allow if you can only have uh, 10,000 units of buying power. 
So hopefully that made sense. If it didn't, watch that a couple of times. I'm gonna try to make this into like a pretty short video. The concepts are just pretty simple math. So if you have to, watch it a couple of times. But right now, I wanna dive into the second way you're going to see that message of insufficient margin. Let's go ahead and delete all this. And let me go ahead and write out our account values and stuff. Instead of making you watch me, I'll just fast forward. And with the power of editing, that will happen right now. So we have our same $100 account, 100 to 1 leverage, and 10,000 units of buying power. This 10,000 units is across your entire account. What I mean by that is 10,000 units on one position, okay, or you can have 10,000 units on five different positions and all of them just be 2,000 unit positions. Hopefully you understand that as well. A lot of traders think 10,000 units means that they can risk 10,000 units or purchase 10,000 units on every trade they place, but that's not the case. So let's dive into another scenario. Let's say this time you are thinking like a semi-normal individual and instead of risking 10% of your total account value, which is terrible risk management, you decide you're going to risk $2 on this specific trade, same five pip stop loss. So at this point, what do you need? Simple math comes into play again. I'm gonna avoid that simple math for you, but all you have to do is divide five by your $2 per pip. And in order to get that, what we end up with is 40 cents per pip would give me a $2 stop loss, a $2 risk on a five pip stop loss. So 40 cents, what do I need in terms of the amount of units I need to purchase in order to equal 40 cents per pip? Well, a micro lot, which is 1,000 units of currency, is equal to 10 cents per pip on a majority of pairs. And this is a rough estimate. Some pairs are a little bit different. Don't worry about that right now. That's a whole nother video. But 1,000 units of currency, for the most part, most of the time, is equal to 10 cents per pip. So all that means is that we would need 4,000 units of currency to equal our 0 0.40 cents per pip or to equal our five pip stop with a $2 risk, right? So everything should play out okay here. I should be able to place this trade, but what if you try to place this exact trade and you see that same message of insufficient margin? What does that mean? Well, that means the likely scenario is that you forgot you were in two other positions. Let's say one of them was the UJ or dollar yen, and on the dollar yen, you're currently in that trade with 5,000 units. You forgot about that. You're also in the GU with let's say 2,000 units is your position size. So with this being the case, you currently have 7,000 units that you are involved in the market with. Your position currently in your entire account is worth 7,000 units. Therefore, you only have left, simple math here, your 10,000 units you had at the beginning, right? Let's do this math. If you have 7,000 there, then your 10,000 units that you had of buying power minus your 7,000 units you're currently involved with in the market would mean what? It means you only have 3,000 units of buying power, of buying power. So when you try to place a trade with 3,000 units of buy, with, excuse me, when you try to place a trade with 4,000 units and you only have 3,000 units of buying power, your broker, yet again, it will never let you place that trade. And that is the reason you're seeing insufficient funds pop up every time you try to place a trade like this. Maybe it just slipped your mind that you're involved in a couple of other trades. Maybe you didn't understand exactly how margin worked in terms of if you're already in 7,000 units worth of trades, you can't still get 10,000 units worth of buying power. You're going to be limited then to only 3,000 units of buying power because you're already involved in the market with open positions worth 7,000 units. So that would be the second reason you would end up getting that message that says insufficient funds when trying to place a trade. So now that we have those two things covered, and again, I know that that was a lot of math, but most of it's really simple math. So if you just kind of went over your head, any of it did, I totally understand as a beginner, all that would have went completely over my head as well. But watch this video two or three times, just that front portion of it, and it should make a lot more sense. You should be able to get that within two to three times watching it. But right now, let's talk about how you can avoid that situation. So now we know why we get the message of insufficient margin. How can we avoid it? Well, the first way you can avoid it is going to be to risk less. So let's say 
do the same scenario and I won't put you through watching me draw it, but let's do the same scenario. Let's say we're in the same scenario, $100 account, 101 leverage, meaning 10,000 units of buying power. At this point, let's say we have no open trades and you have that same trade, five pips of stop loss, and you say, okay, I only want to risk $2, which is a decent risk management plan, depending on your risk tolerance, 2% of your total account value on this specific trade. We've already done this math, so we don't have to. That just means you would only need 4,000 units. In order to place this trade, your broker would absolutely allow that if you had no other open positions and this was your account and your, your leverage. If you had a $100 account, 101 leverage, 10,000 units of buying power, your brokerage would 100% let you place this trade. That's supposed to be a check mark. I know it doesn't look like one, but your brokerage would let you place that. So that's the first way to avoid getting an insufficient fund is one, keep up with the amount of trades you already have in your account. If you're at zero, you obviously have your 10,000 units of buying power. So just be sure that the position size you're, you're going to place on that trade is not higher than the buying power you have based on your account size and your leverage. The next way is to stop trying to trade a five minute chart if you don't even understand margin. This is something that I see so many beginners do. It drives me crazy because I have fell into the trap myself. That's why it drives me crazy. I lost so much money doing this. I was so confused trying to trade tiny time frames, five minute chart, one minute chart when I first started because I didn't even understand margin. So I was out here trying to risk $10 per trade on a $100 account like I just showed you and I would be either margin called or have insufficient funds for half the trades I tried to place and I could never figure out why. Well, guess why? Because you're trading on a five minute chart and with a five pip stop loss. That's going to eat up margin really quickly because the smaller the stop loss, the more units you need in order to create that $2 risk, that $10 risk in order to create whatever risk management plan you have, the smaller the stop, the more units you'll need. For example, and the way to fix that is let's say, instead of trading a five minute chart, you jumped out to a four hour chart. And on a four hour chart, instead of five pips, this stop loss was 50 pips. Same situation, I'll draw it out just so you'll have it to look at. Same $100 account, 100 to one leverage, 10,000 units of buying power. Now. Let's say you were going crazy with $100 because you really didn't care if you lost it and you want to risk $10 on this trade. Well, if that's the case, do you think you can actually do it now with a 50 pip stop instead of a 5 pip stop? Let's take a look. With a 50 pip stop loss, if we want to risk $10, then how much does each pip need to be worth? That would mean that each pip would need to be worth 20 cents. So if each pip needs to be worth 20 cents, we already discussed this, one micro lot is equal to 10 cents per pip. And how much is a micro lot? 1,000 units of currency. So at this point, we would need 2,000 units in order to place this trade. So now, just because we increased the size of the stop loss, we can actually place this trade and still have 8,000 units left over because we're just taking that 2,000 units off of our 10,000 units of buying power. So this is another way to avoid the insufficient margin situation is by doing nothing more than increasing the time frame you're trading on, increasing the size of your stop loss, because the bigger the stop loss, the less amount of units you're going to need in order to equal that $10 risk or whatever your risk is. You can, by the way, before I end the video, you can exchange these numbers for any number at all and the equations are still exactly the same. Again, if there was something here you didn't understand, rewind the video and check it out. I just wanted to get this out to you guys really quickly. Didn't happen to be that quickly. Looks like I'm above 15 minutes at this point, but I tried. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you click the like button, make sure you subscribe. If you are interested in more advanced training, we do have some space available in the VIP group, which is listed below as EAP training program. This is a full trading course teaching you the strategies I use on a daily basis, my risk management plan, teaching you how to be more disciplined as a trader. And also with this, you get what I call priority email, which is the mentor version of this. Any questions you have, it'll be me answering those questions personally, you'll receive three to five alerts per week of trades I'm taking based on the strategies used in the course. 
And if all of that is not enough, the course comes with a 60 day money back guarantee. Try it out for 60 days. If you don't feel like it improved your trading, hit up my support staff and they will give you a full refund as soon as possible. Kind of a risk-free offer if you're interested in that. Again, link is in the description labeled EAP. If not, totally fine too. Keep it locked here by clicking that subscribe button down below and I will talk to you guys in the next video. See you soon.